Good morning, Strasburg United Methodist Church and others watching this daily devotion. It is Tuesday, September 15th, 2020, and I'm happy that you've joined us for a little devotion today. Um, sometimes when I get stuck uh, trying to figure out what to talk about, uh, I go back to many of my different resources I've used, and I've introduced you, uh, Ted Loader, um, through his book, Gorillas of Grace and Wrestling the Light and a few other things. I've, I've uh, introduced you to Ruth Duck and, and uh, some of her writings over the, over the last few months and um, even read from a spiritual treasury of spiritual readings and, um, and, I've, and I've shared with you also this book called Celebrating the Seasons, uh, Daily Spiritual Readings for the Christian Year. And um, what's really neat about this book is that it, uh, the guy who wrote, who put this, compiled this together, he um, read, must have read hundreds if not thousands of sermons and readings from various theologians over the last 2,000 years. And um, it's heavy on the early church fathers, uh, those folks who were preachers and bishops back in the second, third, and fourth, and fifth centuries of the church. So going back to Roman times. And today I'm going to read to you uh, one of the sermons from a, a man named Saint uh, John Chrysostom. And let me tell you about John Chrysostom. Now, John Chrysostom was um, lived between the age of 347 and 407 AD, so the fourth century. He was born in Antioch, the third city of the Roman Empire, so the third largest city of the Roman Empire. He was a brilliant preacher, which earned him in the sixth century the surname Chrysostom, which means golden mouthed. So he must have been a good preacher. He is honored as one of the four Greek doctors of the church. Against his wish, he was made the Patriarch of Constantinople in 398. He set about reforming the church and exposing corruption among the clergy and in the imperial administration. So it's the trouble. You put somebody in a position of power and, and maybe you don't like what they've done to you. <laughs> he writes, Mules bear fortunes and Christ dies of hunger at your gate. This is what he said about the corrupt clergy and the corrupt Roman government. He fell foul of the Empress Eudoxia, and in spite of the support of Pope Innocent I of Rome, he was sent into exile twice, finally dying of exhaustion and starvation in the year 407. So, kind of an inglorious end to a person who was kind of a troublemaker, it sounds like, but a very gifted preacher. So let me share with you one of his sermons, and this is a um, one of, I don't know, it doesn't say, it just says a reading from a homily of John Chrysostom. He writes, In my view, there is nothing so frigid as a Christian who does not care about the salvation of other people. It is useless to plead poverty in this respect, for the poor widow who put two copper coins in the treasury will be your accuser. So will Peter, who said, Silver and gold have I none. And indeed, Paul was so poor that he often went hungry and without the basic necessities of life. Nor can you plead humble birth, because the apostles were of humble origin and from obscure families. You cannot claim lack of education, because they too were illiterate. And do not plead sickness, because Timothy suffered poor health and was often ill. Everyone can be of service to their neighbor if only we exercise our responsibilities. Look at the trees of the forest. See how sturdy they are, how beautiful, how tall, and how smooth their bark. But they do not bear fruit. If we had a garden, we would prefer to plant pomegranates or olive trees. The other trees may be delightful to look at, but they are not grown for profit. Or if they are, it is very small. People who are concerned only for themselves are like those trees of the forest. No, they are not even that worthwhile. At least forest timber can be used for building houses and fortifications, whereas they are only as good, they are good only for the bonfire. They are like the foolish virgins in the parable, chaste, certainly, discreet and modest, too, but useless. That is why they are rejected. Such is the fate of all who do not nourish Christ. You should reflect, reflect on the fact that none of them is charged with specific sins, such as fornication or perjury. They are charged simply with being of no service to their fellow men and women. 
Take the example of the man who went and buried his talent. He led a blameless life, but a life that was not of service to others. How can such a person be called a Christian? If yeast, when it is mixed with the flour, fails to leaven the dough, how can it be called yeast? Or again, if perfume cannot be sensed by those present, how can it be called perfume in any meaningful sense? So do not say, I cannot encourage others to become Christians. It is impossible. Because if you were really a Christian, it would be impossible for you not to do so. In the natural world, the way things behave is an expression of their properties. It is the same situation here. What I am describing belongs to the very nature of being a Christian. So do not insult God. To claim that the sun cannot shine or that a Christian cannot do good is insulting to God and reveals you as a liar. If we get our lives ordered, the rest will follow as a natural consequence. It is impossible for the light of a Christian to be hidden. It is impossible for so resplendent a lamp to be concealed. Again, I can see why he was a pretty good speaker and a pretty good preacher. You can also see why he was exiled twice by the empress and got a little, uh, got, got some people upset with him. But when I find myself stuck in my Christian faith, or when I find myself um, not sure where to go next in this life, uh, I turn to things like this uh, to help me um, be recharged. You see, Christianity is not only about reading the scriptures and reading the Bible and hearing and understanding what Jesus had to teach us. It is also understanding that we are part of a community of faith. And the, the joy in, in our current age is that we are part of a community of faith that we can trace back 2,000 years and we can read what others have written and learn from them. And we can learn from others in our own day and time who are struggling with the same struggles we have and, and coming up with solutions that are based on the gospel to find a way to live. Now we live in some difficult times now and, and I know you all know that. And I would argue that people have lived through difficult times in the past and they have made their way through it and they have been faithful and so can you. So I encourage you this day to um, work on your salvation with fear and trembling as Paul likes to say, um, but also do it with the knowledge that you can um, rely on others to help you along your journey. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day. And we thank you for the lessons that you teach us um, through your Savior, Jesus Christ, but also uh, through those who have been a great cloud of witnesses who have gone before. Lord, continue to give us strength that we may be the Christians that are known by our love and by our good deeds. Amen. I have a song to share with you today, and I hope you enjoy it. Will you sing with me, Yezu, Yezu? Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneels at the feet of his friends, silently washing their feet. Master who acts as a slave to them. Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Neighbors are rich and poor. Neighbors are black and white. Neighbors are near and far away. Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. These are the ones we should serve. These are the ones we should love. All our neighbors to us and you. Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you.
Thank you so much for joining us today. And may God bless you this day, and I'll see you tomorrow.